that I think it's essential that the board act today. We are down over a billion dollars or 20 percent this year. The state is another 20 billion dollar deficit. Uh, you can talk to the cows come home, but the reality is it's your fiduciary obligation to balance the budget, and I think we're doing it in a way that makes sense. If you pass this budget, we will have better access to classes. We can start hiring professors and instructors and uh, lecturers, so the students will have better class access. Uh, if it continues the way it's going, none of them will get degrees in four years, and it's absolutely essential that they be able to get into their classes to get their degrees, because that's really expensive, that fifth or sixth year at the university. It will end the furloughs for our hardworking faculty and staff. That is my commitment. It's a somewhat risky commitment, given the climate in this state uh, and the unreliable partner that we have in the, in the state of California, but it will do that. It will start employer contributions to the retirement plan, which have not occurred in 19 years. And we must keep that retirement plan robust, or we're going to have thousands and thousands of faculty and staff who are going to be let down after serving this university 10, 20, 30, 40 years in an outstanding fashion. For the long run, we cannot live with these furloughs. We are all about the quality of our faculty and staff. And if they are leaving for other positions, if their morale is bad, we are in trouble. We're very proud of our capital. We're proud of our buildings and our hospitals and all the rest. But at the end of the day, it's about people. Now, I want to talk about people because you heard a lot today about um, how desperate the situation would be for students. And I'm not happy with raising fees, but I'm telling you there is much that is going on that will take care of those very students who spoke today. If the board approves my proposal, we will go to a family income of $70,000. And I don't care what your ethnic group, if you're uh, Asian American or you're African American or Anglo or whatever it is, if your family has an income below $70,000, we will pay your registration and education fee if you have financial need, which means you don't have a trust fund to $5 million out there somewhere. We will pay. That is higher than the state's median income. Under $70,000, you do not pay, you will not be affected by this fee increase. That's real. The second element of it is we're committed, the campuses really, not me, the campuses are committed, all 10 of them, development office by development office, to raising $1 billion in the next five years. And I urge all of you in the audience, all of us around this table, to begin whatever, to make contributions to the, whatever campus or campuses you favor. And that will help our undergraduates, our graduate students, our professional students, and the like. And I really urge all Californians, if the gift is $5 or $10, symbolically that means a great deal to this university and to our students that you are willing to participate in alleviating some of the great pain which is uh, being in, in inflicted. I also want to say something about uh, Sacramento. I have to admit that given our plight, I'm, I'm uh, 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 thinking more and more about our strategy. And I want to say I'm willing to think about anything virtually. Uh, special revenue, if it really brings revenue to the University of California, uh, a designated revenue source, fine with me, so long as it's real, so long as the state maintains its effort and doesn't cut back, uh, and so long as it, the dollars really flow. It's up to you know the tax structure. I don't have a proposal. It's up to uh, our legislative leaders. Those are possibilities. At the same time, we are looking at the efficiency issues. That's what the, that's what the commission that uh, Chairman Gould talked about is about. Now, it's very treacherous terrain because we're the great University of California. We want to maintain the quality of our offerings and our faculty and, and all the rest. But we will look at things like uh, larger class sizes and the student-faculty ratio and teaching loads and three-year degrees and transfer policies and um, uh, policies on, on majors and pre prerequisites for majors. We have to look at everything to see if there's some way that we can uh, not only improve our, uh, uh, the flow of finances, but also look at uh, uh, what are the opportunities to reduce costs without reducing quality. And that's going to be very tough, and the faculty is very well represented in that process, and we're very dependent on the faculty for that. So those are the types of things that, that, that are happening. I think it really will not do, and one can easily say it, I mean, you can talk about mismanagement, you can talk about, uh, you can follow some of the Pied Pipers of fantasy economics that are out there, but the money is not there. 
The money is simply not there. And if it's not there, the only responsible thing for this governing board to do is, is to make sure that we keep this place operating at the same level, with the same high quality, and we will fight another day. We will fight in Sacramento for our resources. We'll be in Washington. We will go to our alumni. Going to the students is not the first choice, and it's not even the total answer to the problem. A lot of these cuts, 2,000 layoffs, are taking place uh, uh, even with the fee increases. So what we need to do now, and what is very important, and we've handed out buttons, I want everyone to join this advocacy program. We need to be prepared to go to Sacramento together. We need the support of our represented groups. We can uh, be fighting each other and casting fingers of blame. It is not going to get us anywhere. What we need to do is have, and this button says, we're UC and we vote. And currently we're 200,000 strong. And with the cooperation of the campuses, we will be over a million strong. And we do vote, and we are people of influence in all communities, in the labor community, the business community, the philanthropic community, the academic community, and so forth. That's the sort of unity that we need. And that, in the long term, is going to be, I think, Mr. Chairman, the, the solution to our problem. But on this day, we need to take decisive action on the budget. So with that, I'll turn the microphone back over to you. Great.